Chris Cuomo, CNN, who is in a, uh, a competition to be the dumber of the Cuomo brothers, and, and right now is doing a pretty good job, I have to admit. Here we have Chris Cuomo saying that, oh, it's actually a lie to say the Democrats are radical when it comes to this stuff. Here he is. And so if you're a Christian, if you're a conservative who believes in those values, and your choices are Donald Trump, who sometimes says things you don't like and you wouldn't do it that way, versus rule by a party that would allow abortion on demand and install federal judges who would allow it, this is no choice at all. You go with, you go with your gut on but policy but you know that's and you a lie, your right? faith and your morals on policy. It's not a lie. Right, Watch so you're going to be about faith and morals, and morning, then you're going to lie. Said, I saw the said, clip he, to prepare for the segment, abortion. Scott. He did not say abortion on demand whenever you want it, wherever you want it. Let me ask you something. How do you reconcile? He did. How do you? I, this is why I just I wanted you and me. I am not lying to you, Chris he Cuomo. didn't, Scott, and we both know it. And look, le, no, I'm not saying, look, it's a lie to say that Pete Buttigieg or anybody in the Democratic Party who's running for president wants to have abortion whenever you want it at any time. All right. So Chris Cuomo there. First of all, there's a couple of really interesting things in that clip because he is one of the things that they talked about was an interview that was done by Pete Buttigieg where he's talking to Meghan McCain on The View. And he said that he would not put any restrictions on abortion. And so Chris Cuomo takes issue with Scott Jennings, the guest there, saying that Pete Buttigieg was calling for abortion on demand. So a couple of things that I want you to notice about that. First of all, this is not Caleb Cockwitz's words. These are Chris Cuomo's words, who is saying that suggesting that Democrats are in favor of abortion on demand is untrue and also that it would constitute extreme because he's saying to Scott Jennings, you're wanting to cast them as extremists. You're trying to make them out to be scary when it comes to abortion. And because of that, you're trying to say they're in favor of abortion on demand. So that's Chris Cuomo. Chris Cuomo of CNN, not exactly a right-leaning guy, saying that, well, abortion on demand is extreme, and you're trying to cast them as extremists, ergo you're saying, therefore, abortion on demand. And, by the way, Chris Cuomo is right. Like I said, a recent Gallup poll found that only 13% of Americans are in favor of no restrictions on abortion, abortions in the third trimester, that kind of thing. And we are one of only seven nations on Earth that still has abortion on demand at the federal level, that there are no time restrictions when it comes to abortion. But here's what's really at the heart of the matter. Was Scott Jennings lying? Was it accurate? Because that's what Chris Cuomo said. He said that, no, Pete Buttigieg nor anybody in the Democrat Party is in favor of abortion on demand. Except we have the clip of that, and I'll let you watch and make your own decision on this, whether or not he was lying. Listen to this clip just got a lot of play in conservative media, conservative circles, where you were talking about, and this is your quote, there's a lot of parts of the Bible that talk about how life begins with breath. So even that is something we can interpret differently. It obviously, in my circles, was passed around everywhere because I think the interpretation from pro-life people like me was that you meant a baby actually being born. And then possible, you know, there's a lot of controversy with um, Governor Northam and what it means and what, what time a woman should be able to have an abortion. I just wanted you to clarify because I found that statement to be pretty radical. Well... Uh, I'm just pointing to the fact that uh, different people will interpret their own moral lights and, for that matter, interpret scripture differently. But we live in a country where it is extremely important that no one person have to be subjected to some other person's interpretation of their own religion. But I know I think, we're not um, going to agree. Partial birth abortion is something that was coming up in, in, like I said, Governor Northam. It was a huge controversy when he was running for governor. I, I think people, even Democrats, and there are a lot of pro-life Democrats in the country, want to know exactly where your line is, because you will be the president if you win. Right, but my point is that it shouldn't be up to a government official to draw the line. It should be up to the woman who is confronted with the choice. Side after a baby was born, you'd be Does anybody with that. seriously think that's what these I, cases I are about? Think, think, think about the situation. That, yes. if, you're, if this is a late term situation, mm -hmm. then by definition, it's one where a woman was expecting to carry the pregnancy to term. Then she gets the most perhaps devastating news of her life. We're talking about families that, that may have picked out a name, maybe assembling a crib, and they learn something excruciating and are faced with this terrible choice. And I don't know what to tell them. Uh, morally about what they should do. I just know that I, I trust her and her decision medically or morally 
isn't going to be any better because the government is commanding her to do it in a certain way. I respect way. the answer. You didn't back down from it. This is going to hurt you in the middle of the country with the Republicans you're trying to win over. People like me, this is a hard line, and mm -hmm. quite frankly, that question, that answer is just pretty. Ra you're just as radical as I thought it was. What's important to understand about this, and I know that was a long clip, but I felt it was important to do that to get the full context of not just his answer and, and take him out of context, but I wanted you to get the context of what Meghan McCain was asking about. So she point blank asked him a question. Would a President Pete Buttigieg be in favor of any limitations on abortion? And she specifically asked about late-term abortions. And his answer is, no, no restrictions whatsoever. How is that not saying he's in favor of abortion on demand? He said, I don't think the government should get involved at all. There should be no restrictions on that. Well, is there any other way to understand that answer other than abortion on demand? Because I don't think there is. Now, maybe Chris Cuomo has a, a different translator or he, he thinks abortion on demand means something completely different. I, I don't know. But either way, I don't see how any rational person can see Meghan McCain ask, would you be in favor of any limits on late term abortion? And he goes, no, no restrictions. The government shouldn't get involved. How is that not saying he's in favor of abortion on demand? What, what's so crazy about that is not only does he stop there, because it would be one thing if she asked, would you be in favor of late-term abortions? Would you be in favor of anything that restricts that? And he says, no, I don't think the government should get involved. But that's not all he said. First, he says that he wouldn't, and then he goes on to expound upon that and explain why he believes that late-term abortions should be allowed. So it's not even something that's kind of murky, or maybe he said it, maybe he didn't, maybe that's not what he really meant. No, he then makes the case for why they should remain legal to suggest that nobody in the Democrat Party, Pete Buttigieg nor any other Democrat, is making this case is patently false. The Democrats have unanimously voted against any kind of bill that places a restriction because, like I said, we've already voted on this once in the Senate, the, uh, the, the Pain Capable Protection Act that they would not restrict abortion even in the late terms, even though only 13% of Americans think that that should be the way that abortion is in this country, they still refuse to do even that. Because as wrong as that answer is, and as evil as it is to want to kill a child in the womb, especially one that can already feel pain, has already basically fully developed with the exception of it just needs to grow a little bit more in size, as horrible as that is, it's also not based in reality because you'll listen that his explanation was, well, these women, these are women that have no choice. They're put in a very difficult medical situation and they have to choose between having a baby and staying alive. And in many cases, these are women that have already picked out a name. They've already picked out a crib. They, they want the baby. They just, they know that it's going to be too medically difficult for them to have it. Well, first of all, those particular situations are insanely rare. They're insanely rare. And most of the time, the actual medically preferable thing to do is to induce labor, get the baby out of the mom if it is some kind of medical emergency. Because performing an abortion would actually take longer and be more dangerous to the woman's health in most of the situations that he's talking about where it's some kind of medical reason, it's some kind of medical rationale. But here's the thing. It's all a game. Because this is what I would have done if I were in, in Meghan McCain's shoes at that point, and I'm sure I would look terrible in her shoes, but the point is, if I were there, that I would ask, okay, well, does that mean that you would be in favor of a ban on late-term abortions that do not involve some kind of medical emergency? Because even in the state of Alabama, right here in, in the heart of Dixie, where we have an actual full-on ban at any point for any reason on abortion, there is still a medical exception. If you can prove that your life is in danger or your health is in significant danger, you actually, even under Alabama's abortion law, can still pursue an abortion. That is still a thing that is medically allowable under our, uh, under our system. Now, there's a couple of situations where I actually disagree with that, and we had that debate back then. If, if you want to watch and, and hear my opinions on it, go back to an episode where we were talking about it. But 
my point in all of this is even the extreme pro-life people like myself can still at least see an argument for a medical exception being made in some circumstances. May not agree with it morally, but can see why there is at least a legal argument if the legal argument is to preserve life. But Buttigieg is saying, because there are some situations where that might happen, we should just have it legal for everybody. Well, no, you're playing the game. It's the same thing when you talk about the rape and incest exception. If you ever do get into a debate with somebody that is pro-choice, and they bring up the rape and incest exception, the first thing that you should do is, okay, well, are you in favor of getting rid of all elective abortions then? And about 95% of the time, they'll say no. See, what they're trying to do is they're trying to take an exception, an extreme minority of cases, and use it to justify all the cases where it's done for any reason. I mean, literally just because I'm using it as a birth control and I wasn't responsible with the birth control, so now I want to get rid of the baby because I don't want to have a baby. See, they're using those examples to try to justify the whole thing. Because when you're talking about a medical emergency like that, it's actually pretty rare anyway. The Gutmuncher Institute, which, by the way, they say that there were about 12,000 late-term abortions every year. And by the way, I want you to remember that Gutmuncher is actually a pro-abortion lobby group. So they're not exactly conservatives. This isn't coming from the March for, for Life or the National Right to Life. This is coming from a pro-abortion group. And they actually say that in these cases, most of the late-term abortions have nothing to do with medical necessity. So this is from Gutmuncher, and this is a report that they did. And I want you to uh, read the last line there because they're talking about it. But data suggests that most women seeking later terminations are not doing so for reasons of fetal abnormality or life endangerment. But a judge gets it completely wrong. The, even the pro-abortion people are saying, no, late-term abortions, most of the time, they're not doing it because of a medical reason, they're doing it for convenience. Now, maybe... This is just one instance where Cuomo was wrong. So he was wrong on the Pete Buttigieg thing and, and being radical and being in favor of abortion on demand. But he was right on the vast majority of Democrats, at least, not being this radical. But unfortunately, that's not true either. And if you don't believe me, you need look no further than just a couple weeks ago. Not this most recent debate, but the one before it. Here's an exchange between uh, the de debate moderators and Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. I lived in an America in which abortion was illegal and rich women still got abortions. And that's what we have to remember about this. States are heading toward trying to ban abortion outright, and the Supreme Court seems headed in exactly that direction as well. If we are going to protect the people of the United States of America, and we are going to protect our rights to have dominion over our own bodies, then it's going to mean we can't simply rely on the courts. Three out of every four people in America believe right now that the rule of Roe versus Wade should be the law. That means we should be pushing for a congressional solution as well. It is time to have a national law to protect the right of a woman's choice. You asked the simple question, is there a litmus test for those of us up here? For me, there is. I will never nominate any person to the Supreme Court or the federal courts in general who is not 100% pro Roe v. Wade. Number two, we have got to codify Roe v. Wade into legislation. Number three, we have to significantly expand funding for Planned Parenthood. So there you have it, right out of the horse's mouth. Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders saying, no, I, I wouldn't appoint a single judge that isn't 100% Roe v. Wade. And, and not only that, we need to take it a step further. We need to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land. We need to codify that in legislation. Now, I want to point out a couple of things here. First of all, Roe v. Wade is no longer the standard. And actually hasn't been for a long time. I, I don't remember the exact timeline. But if I didn't mention this, then Laura Clark would come through my computer screen and slap me for not getting this right. So I'm going to do the best that I can here. Um, on this particular note, 
Roe v. Wade actually hasn't been the standard for a very long time. The newest standard is the viability standard. And because of that, states are allowed to restrict abortion up to the point of viability, which, by the way, is a moving target as science gets more sophisticated and better and and preemies are able to live at at earlier and earlier stages in development. But I'm not going to get off into all the details on that. Suffice it to say that the Roe v. Wade standard, which had no restrictions on it whatsoever, that's actually been gone for a really long time. And to codify Roe v. Wade into legislation, what they are basically suggesting there on stage is abortion on demand, and that's a federal law, and no state can restrict it. That's what they were just advocating for. So to say that no Democrat is suggesting abortion on demand anywhere, anytime, for any reason, that's exactly what Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, two of the Democrat frontrunners, just said on stage. Andrew Yang was arguably the only one that would even talk unfavorably about abortion and was lamb blasted for it. Here's Andrew Yang. I think we have to get back to the point where no one is suggesting that we be celebrating an abortion at any point um, in the pregnancy. That there was a time in democratic circles where we used to talk about it being something that like you don't like to see, but that should be within the freedoms of, of the woman and the mother to decide. And so to me, I think there is a really important tone to set on this, where you don't just say, like, we're absolutist about it. Though I have to say, I am relatively absolutist on this. Like, I think that it should be completely up to the woman and her doctor, and the state should not be intervening all the way uh, through pregnancy. But it's a tragedy to me if someone decides that they don't want to have a child and they're on the fence and that maybe at some point later, I mean, it's a very, very difficult personal decision. Um, and it should be something that we're very, very sensitive to. I think that celebrating children, family, like these are universal human values. And if we manage to lead on that and then say, but we also stand for women's reproductive rights, I believe we can bring Americans closer together on a really, really important personal issue. Now, I want you to think about this because Andrew Yang wound up getting out of the race about 72 hours after that. And I don't think that it was exclusively because of these comments, but I think they played a contributing factor because people on the left, the claws and fangs came out and they were going after him. There were people that were saying he needs to drop out immediately. There is no room for anybody running for the Democratic presidential nomination that espouses these beliefs. And I want you to think about the seriousness of this. And and I'm not just talking about randos on Twitter. These were big players, journalists, uh, people in in, uh, think tanks, so on and so forth. What did he say there? Because he was in favor of abortion on demand. He said in that exchange between him and the interviewer, he said, I don't think that it should ever be restricted. I think abortion on demand at any point in the pregnancy. But I also think that we should change the tone a little bit. Apparently, anything less than full-on celebration and talking about how wonderful abortion is is enough to get you kicked off the island in the Democrat Party. That if you're not willing to go out there with a party hat on talking about how awesome abortion is, then you're just too pro-life for us. The guy said abortion on demand at any point in the pregnancy. That wasn't far enough radical for the people in the DNC. Also, remember in all of this, because we've just given you a myriad of example after example after example of how every single Democrat at the top is for abortion on demand and talks about it. And even there are some that actually celebrate that. And Chris Cuomo still claiming, nope, no. Democrats, they're not radical on abortion, and they're not for abortion on demand. The hilarious thing is, do you know that there's only one state where abortion on demand is allowed? Because federally it's allowed, but most states have some kind of restriction on it. Do you know which one doesn't? Chris Cuomo state, New York, the one that he is sitting in as he says that there are no Democrats that are in favor on abortion, uh, for abortion on demand. And you know what else is even more ironic about that? Do you know how New York got to that point? Because of a law that was signed, uh, because of a bill that was signed into law by his brother, Andrew Cuomo. There was a bill that was put on his desk that said, we are erasing all protections for the unborn and that abortion on demand is basically now a thing 
in New York City, in, in the state of New York, the only state that allows it. And it was Chris Cuomo's older brother that signed it into law. And so maybe you could make the case if that weren't true. Yeah, maybe Chris Cuomo just misspoke or he doesn't understand what is being said here. No, he's just straight up lying. So if you want to know why people call CNN fake news, that's a perfect example of it. Because Chris Cuomo, the brother of the man who signed abortion <laughs> on demand into law in his home state, the brother of that man can get on CNN and say, there are no Democrats in favor of abortion on demand. It's not a thing. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.